So welcome straight to Balgo, it's another Jibitsha YouTube video over here with your host Jibitsha Damien and this is my hobby vlog number 42. Um, so yeah, here we are for another week um, and I'm back um, carrying on with Project Gundabad. So um, I've got my six Gundabad orcs here that you um, saw me assembling and converting last week and um, as you can see they're all now black and I've undercoated these guys. Um, try and save a bit of time with black spray undercoat. So um, you might recall that I painted my first six Gundabads black to undercoat them and then to try and save a bit of time I um, sprayed the next ones white to kind of work from that and uh, these guys and then I decided that my white armour hadn't the sorry the armour on the ones that I had uh, undercoated white hadn't quite come up um, as well so I decided to go back to black but I thought I'd try the black spray to hopefully um, save a bit of time. Now I've, um, I've I've never really liked using black spray because I never find it gets um, great coverage. And again, I have to admit, I was uh, I know my my fears came true. Now I don't know how well this will show up on here. It looks to me on the screen like it's not showing up at all. I can get a bit more light over there. Not sure. But in here, in the cracks and the recesses, let's try it on this guy. I think. Um, the black hasn't covered everything, definitely. So can you see this kind of, hopefully it's coming out, there's sort of grey bits in there where it hasn't got, obviously that could be down to the way I sprayed it or whatever, but it hasn't covered everything. And that's why I traditionally don't um, undercoat in black, because if I was going to say for an Urukheim, the way you see them, I just dry brushed up, I need the black to be the actual base coat and it's going to stay there, so I'd need to then touch it up with a bit of black, in which case if you're touching it up with black, I don't think there's, you save all that much time. However, on these, um, the only reason I need black is for the armour plating um, to kind of make a ba better base for the silver and as you can see because the um, tops of the armour, the tops of most of the models have all been have all been covered with the black that should be alright so I'm going to um, plough ahead with these and hopefully this undercoat will um, work well and then the bits that have missed I'll just kind of cover over in the sort of base coating stage uh, for the other guys. So. Um, that is uh, one of the projects for this week that I'll hopefully be making some progress on. Um, I've got these six Gundabads. Um, you also last week saw my um, Dolgalder bases arrive, and so I might be getting a bit of time to um, paint on that, basically. Um, I'm a little ahead of you at the moment. I'm recording this on Saturday um, afternoon, um, as in... Oh God, I'm so confused about when you're going to see this. Uh, as in nine days before you watch this. But I've only got until uh, Thursday to do any hobby this week. So I haven't got a lot of time. But I'm hoping to make some progress on these. I'm also hoping to make some progress on my bases. And then possibly um, I might even make some progress on this guy. Who I believe you've seen um, assembled. But here is Bulg. And he's been undercoated. And as you can see, he's been undercoated white. And that's primarily because his skin is going to be very pale. And I always prefer working, I actually genuinely prefer working from a white undercoat um, than a black if I can. I think you can just see the details far, far better with a white undercoat. But um, definitely when you've got a model where, where the majority of his skin's all going to be pale, I thought that would be um, a better off uh, solution. So there we go. There's um, Bulg on his scenic base. Um, I'll stick him behind there. And I also have Bulg on foot. Now I'm certainly not going to get these six in this time I've got, I'm not going to get the six Gundabads and Bulg done, but I'm hoping to do one of those. I, I'm leaning at the moment towards doing the Gundabads to be honest, um, to get another six out of the way, um, and saving Bulg for a kind of treat near the end. Um, so hopefully, I'm quite optimistic that this week you'll see um, six more Gundabads done, um, finished, and maybe some progress on the bases as well. All my bases for my army, I'm going to try that. But that's not it, as if, uh, as if that wasn't enough. Um, I've got some more stuff that I'm going to be working on, and that is these guys. So here are my last six. These guys um, arrived today um, from Games Workshop. My last six Gindabads, and I'm going to try and get those cleaned up. As you see, I try and constantly have the production line going, so just as I finish the last set, I've now got these ready to go. And similarly, when these are done, I want these ones ready to go. So um, I'm going to actually be spending a bit of time this week at my parents' house a couple of times and generally when I go and visit them I um, use that as some time to kind of clean up uh, figures. So I'm going to take these Gundabads with me and try and get those done there. So there we go. Um, a kind of short week for me. 
Um, I will get a hobby vlog up uh, this week where you're watching it, because of course I got it up, but this is nine days in advance of you watching it, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to get done at the moment. Um, but I'm hoping that these will be assembled and either bulk mounted or the six Gundabads will be finished. If I can achieve that, I'll be happy with my progress and stay on track. So um, there we go. Um, I'll come back when I've got some updates. Okay, so it's time for a bit of an update. Uh, since you last saw these um, with my six black undercoated walks, I'm about to start uh, the week's hobby. Yeah, I've made a fair bit of progress on selection of things. So as you can see, first off, Bulg is still as white as the uh, day he was born. Um, but uh, we'll get to him in good time. And first off, what I've done is base coated and shaded uh, these orcs. There they are after the shading process. So these guys are now ready for highlighting these next six. Um, so this took me about probably four hours all told to get them all base coated and shaded up. And they've um, they've come up pretty well. I think the armour do does look better having been a, the silver painted on over black. So that's a, that's a bit of a bonus. But these guys are um, kind of the next the next thing I'll be doing is um, definitely highlighting these guys up and trying to get the six of them finished. There's my um, captain copy. I did find, find a fun fact. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Um, it says fun. Uh, bear with me. Didn't plan this. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. And bang. So, um, I mentioned, I told you when I was converting uh, this guy, da -da -da -da, that he kind of inadvertently ended up looking like this guy. The going to be a captain model. Now, the reason for this, I realised, is I can't remember which of these is the. This is the original. This is the model here, this Gundabad orc, that this guy was converted from. Yeah? You can see that that's the same body. There's a head swap and arm swap. And what I realised as I converted it is that this guy here has exactly the same body as the captain, which is why the other guy now looks like him. Wait for that to focus. Ta da! Got the loincloth absolutely the same. So these two models have exactly the same base model, um, base pose, which is then why if you do a certain conversion on this guy, he ends up looking a hell of a lot like the captain because it's working from exactly the same model. So there we go. Fun bit of trivia. Um, there we go. And then my last one is here. So these guys, happy with these, making good progress, base coated and shaded, ready for the highlights next. So that's the first thing. And um, what I'll now do is show you the next thing I've been doing. Okay, and here they are. Um, as you see, the next thing is that I've got my last six Gundabads um, converted and assembled. Um, the only thing I haven't done on these guys is I haven't green stuffed them, so you'll see, they'll see some gaps. But I mentioned that I was going to be um, working on these guys alongside uh, painting the other guys. What I've basically been doing is painting when I'm up here on my own. Then when I go downstairs and watch TV, I tend to clean models up in front of the TV. And um, a nice bonus of this is that I was really chuffed with these. If I get rid of the ones that I'm less impressed with first. But I think these six conversions are um, amongst the best conversions I've done. I, I was a bit, if you've been following the vlogs, you know, I was a bit worried about finding another kind of um, six kind of cool, unique poses. But um, I was quite pleased with them. So they haven't been green stuffed and their fine cast bits haven't been straightened out yet but they've been assembled and um, prepared for pinning. He's kind of cool, jumping forward. Uh, this guy looks quite good. Quite pleased with him. This guy was, uh, I was, I took a lot of inspiration from um, some of the ones that Bradley Cobden has been doing. And, um, oh, who's the other guy? Sorry, is it like, maybe Ori Schmidt? Sorry if it's not. There's someone else who's put up a load of photos. This one was robbed straight from Bradley. Uh, it's a different head, but the way he combined the arms with the um, uh, body, I really liked on this guy. So I nicked him, so cheers for that, Bradley. Um, and I really like that one. I think that's very, very cool. Uh, this guy's well chuffed with, because uh, as I've said before, these arms don't lend themselves particularly well to converting, but this is our legendary captain body again. He needs a lot of green stuff, and obviously in the shoulders there. It's quite pleased how he came out. And I think this guy might be my favorite. You've got this kind of cool walking forward pose. 
So there we go, they're all um, converted, there are my final six. So as I'm painting my other six, I'm now going to be, in the meantime, kind of green stuff in these and um, fine cast bending them and attaching them to some bases so they are ready to go. Talking of bases... Ta-da! Uh, here are my bases, my uh, bases from Generation Shift. Um, someone asked on a previous comment, I think I've replied to it, um, but saying um, how to get hold of some of these bases, um, you just need to get in contact with Matt Davis, um, who's aka Generation Shift. Uh, you can either find him on the Facebook page and ask about his bases, or um, look for his own Facebook page, which is Generation Shift, or check out Generation Shift YouTube channel. Um, really good stuff on there, and you'll be able to get these and um, lots of his other fantastic bases. So here are my bases, they're all here for this army. I bought, um, as I mentioned, I bought a few more. I'm ready for some Hunter Orcs, but these are all the ones I need for my Doubles Army. Um, so I've got 26 here, um, which is 24 Gundabads, um, plus Bold, plus the Captain. And what I'm going to do is kind of batch paint these. Now these guys have been um, sprayed black, um, using the new Chaos Black spray. Um, I, I tried my best to kind of get it right in there. It was a bit, as, a, as you may have seen in my last vlog, I can kind of complained about the coverage that Chaos Black gets. But I think it's a bit better on these things here because um, because they don't have you don't have to get underneath them like you would on a model. So hopefully uh, these have covered well enough. And if I do see any little patches, I'll just touch them up as I'm going. And you may notice I've got these handy um, base holders things, um, which are milk bottle tops. Um, so that's what that's what I made them out of. Uh, my wife's a primary teacher. And she uses loads and loads of, um, she keeps milk bottle tops for um, uh, her junk modelling at school. So I pinched a load of those and have used them um, to put the base on as a handy thing to hold them while I paint. So there we go, there are my bases. And I'm actually optimistic that um, by the end of this hobby vlog I will have done all of these things. That's my hope. So I will have finished my six Gundabads, I will have finished all of the bases and potentially even done some work on the other six Gundabads. But as ever I'll come back and let you know when I've got some updates. Okay, so here we are, and we are back with a bit of an update. Um, quite an unexpected update, uh, to be honest. Um, as you may have seen, my uh, uh, layout here has changed because I'm now um, I'm at my mum and dad's house. As I said, we're going to visit them. And I'm being a bit quiet at the moment because it is incredibly late at night. It's 20 past 3 in the morning, and I've just had an incredibly productive um, hobby session. Um, I've done something that I rarely do, which is actually bring my paints back to my parents. So I've brought a little um, mini paint station that I can set up and I sat down and I've just spent the last three hours working on my bases and here they are they're not finished by any means but they are all base coated huh, base coated and you can see them all here and um, yeah I've just spent about um, three hours on these guys and I'm really pleased with the results very unexpected amount of work and I've just been able to kind of push on through. And I'll show you what I've got. And this is how they're looking. So they've been, um, you saw them when they were black, they've been dry brushed with Mechanicus um, standard grey. Then the mud was painted in with Rhinox hide. The um, metal has been painted with lead belcher. And the uh, vines have been painted in with Caliban green. Um, so this is really cool. And painting these bases, what this did was really show me how cool these bases are. These are the Generation Shift um, Forgotten Dungeon bases. And kind of getting in um, close to all the details and starting to work them up um, really showed how cool these bases are and what an awesome job Matt's done on them. So I kind of actually really enjoyed this. I was kind of dreading doing it a bit. And they've obviously taken a while because they've taken three hours. But if you bear in mind that I'm actually working on um, 26 at the same time, Basically means I've spent about 15 minutes on each one of these bases in total, something like that. So they're coming along really, really nicely. And um, what I'm now going to do is chuck a load of null oil over it. I'm actually following the painting guide that um, Adam, who's doing the other half of the, my doubles partner, who's doing the other half of the army, um, used. So I'm following his colours and I'm now going to chuck a wash of null oil over it um, to give it a bit of shading and then leave that to dry overnight. And then tomorrow I'll be working on the highlights. So um, yeah, there we go. Uh, I've got a lot to do over the next couple of days, um, painting-wise, but I'm really impressed with my progress so far. And um, please, how these are coming out. These are milk bottle tops, they're a 
been an absolute godsend as well for uh, holding the bases. They've made a big difference. But there we go. So um, hopefully you'll see these again tomorrow at some point when they're either shaded or possibly even finished. Okay, and here we are, and it's up to update time, and I am pleased to say that the bases are finished. Oh, woo -woo. Um, you can obviously see there's slightly less of them here at the moment, um, which I'll get to in a minute, but um, I thought I'd show you these ones which are completely done. So here we go. There is the finished uh, finished product. So these are, um, I'm sure you remember, but the Forgotten Dungeon bases from Generation Shift, Matt Davis. So go and check them out if you want. There we go. Um, they're all different um, different designs, there are ten different designs in, in all, but they've all been painted in the same way. Let me show these, really happy with how these came out. Um, they're my first time I've done a uh, base that are different, and it's the first time I've really had to paint the bases as opposed to... I know you're always kind of putting paint on the bases, but this feels like a, a painting project rather than... Um, rather than just finishing off models that you'd already done. Um, I think I showed you a kind of wide shot. Oh, that one needs a bit of touching up before it's finished because I've put a bit of green stuff in there um, where, I've, uh, where, I need to, where I changed where a model was going to go. Um, these are all... Uh, I think I showed you that I batch painted them, so this has been a kind of like essentially a full day's work to get all of the 26 done. There we go. Now, as you can see, that kind of green stuff was because, hopefully, uh, you can see there's a little peg there, a little black peg that's been pinned, and they've all, you should see, they've all got their little um, pin on. Something I'm trying to focus on. Uh, where's the pin on that one? Oh, it's just there. Yeah, you can see these little black pins. They've all got one of those put onto them to. Um, help take an orc later. There are seven here um, for the six um, orcs uh, that I haven't assembled yet, uh, sorry that I haven't painted yet, and for um, uh, the seventh ones for bulk. So uh, the way I painted these, um, they were sprayed black um, to begin with, um, gave that really good coating and because I was able to go kind of straight down on them um, it did cover everything unlike the models which was great. I then um, largely worked from the uh, colour scheme that my doubles partner Adam uh, used, remember you can check out how his, he's getting on with his half of the army in uh, the link below for um, over at his channel. And so I followed his colour scheme mostly, I didn't have exactly the same colours as him, but I tried to match it. Uh, which was um, dry brush um, the whole black base with Mechanicus standard grey. The mud was then painted as Ryan Oxide. The metal was painted with um, lead belcher, this is as you can see is obviously an old type of bulk gun metal but I've put lead belcher on it for the new name. Um, the vines were done with Caliban green. Then the entire base was given um, a wash of null oil, which I gave a good, good shake um, to make sure it came out with a matte finish. Then after that, the vines were painted with Lauren Forest, and then all the mud. I tried a few different things for the mud, and I ended up settling on all the mud um, was dry brushed with Steel Legion drab and a bit of the vines. So if I show you here on this, you should see that the vines also have a slightly yellow tinge to them yellowy brown tinge um, because they got a bit of the brown on them as well which was in part because it was going to be hard to avoid them but also I think it works quite well and kind of dulls the green down a bit which is nice then um, the metal was edge highlighted um, with lead belcher and then the metal was shaded again um, just gently with um, Ararat's earth shade and then the important bit um, was the um, edge highlight and as you can see if, hopefully if we get in here there's a lot of kind of edge highlighting, got, highlighting gone on, which I never would have normally done. I would have dry brushed, but it was Adam's suggestion. I thought, all right, I'll give it a go. And I used um, Codex Grey for it. And I found it looked good, but um, it was very, very stark. It was a very, it almost looked like a white outline rather than a highlight. So then what I then did, which was fairly painstaking, but I think worth it, was I went and got Eschen Grey and painted basically um, in between the edge and the, the middle, so there's then a smaller line kind of around it, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, so there should be a kind of dark centre, you can kind of see it on this one here, there's a dark centre to the stone, then an Eschen grey highlight around it, and then the Codex grey around there, and it just um, helps to add a bit of depth to it I think, and um, kind of really finishes them off, and I'm so happy I did it, because I could see the whole the 26 are in front of me, 
and as I was doing it, you could see that the ones that had the Codex Grey applied to them, the Eschen Grey, sorry, applied to them, looked so much better than the ones with the um, Codex Grey. So well worth doing, in my opinion. Um, so there they are. Um, it did take a while. I kind of lost track, as always. I've been listening to my audiobook and kind of popping in and popping out over the last day. But I think, all told, this took about eight hours um, to paint all the bases, all 26 of them. Um, there's, as I said, there's 26, so each base probably took me about tw between 20 minutes and half an hour, I'd say. The rims were then painted in Chaos Black, or Abaddon Black, obviously. Um, so about 20 minutes, half an hour for these, which is a lot to spend on bases, I guess, but um, I think it's worth it. I think they, they look good. It was a whole day of painting, essentially, but um, I think well worth it, hopefully. But as you can see, these uh, seven bases currently have no one to go on them, and who might go on them? These guys! Um, these are the six um, orcs that you saw um, previously um, assembled and um, ungreen filled, if that uh, makes any sense. But they are now um, done. There they are. They've had the green stuff um, fill them in. So I know this guy had a bit done under his neck. Um, this guy had a fair bit of work to do around his arms just to fill them in, make them look a bit solid. And all the gaps have been filled. And obviously, as you see, they have been um, sprayed black because the six that I'm working on at the moment, I um, worked from a black. Uh, spray black undercoat and they seem to come out well. Um, again, you can see there, it shows off much better than when I tried to show off my last Wobby vlog how the um, spray misses bits. I I don't really know what people normally do to get around this because I imagine this is normally quite annoying for people. Um, but as I mentioned in my last one, it's happened on all of them. It's quite um, severe. And, uh, I know you can obviously spray up and stuff, but just, I don't know, it, without covering your hands and stuff, it just seems like it would be a frustrating thing. But thankfully, um, for these models, it works all right because the important thing is that the kind of big surfaces of the metal, like this bit and the arm plate and the head, they get covered so I can work the silver over them. And everything that happens kind of underneath here doesn't matter as much because it ends up just being kind of shaded. But um, there we go. So these six have been very lightly um, blue tacked um, into their bases. I think they'd been drilled last time, hadn't they? Ready for pinning. But they've been very, very, very light, lightly um, super glued. What is that? Try. Try and flick whatever that little white thing is off at some point. Um, but they've been very, very lightly super glued to these bases so I can base coat them and shade them. Um, and that's, well, that's my last six for the Doubles Army. So I have now assembled all the models I need for my uh, Doubles Army, which is quite cool. But obviously they're not quite done. So, I base coat them and shade them in this state. Um, which I think is where I was with the uh, other six when I last saw you. And then once, because the reason for that is that the base coat, particularly the silver, I do with um, a fairly big brush, so it gets on the base. And then I wash them, and the wash tends to run down to the base, which is quite messy. And then what I've decided to do to paint them is to put them onto these bases then. Um, so glue them down firmly onto these completed bases, and then work the highlights up from there. And I'll show you an example of that now. So here we go, here are the latest six I'm working on. I can't honestly remember where these were um, in the last um, stage I showed you. Uh, I know they'd been, um, they were definitely undercoated. I think they'd been based and shaded. I'm not sure, but I hadn't started on the highlights. But I have now started on the highlights. And as you can see, they're also glued onto your bases. So these are the ones that were pinned. These six bases all had pins in them. Um, and so I've attached them to, uh, to kind of help support them. And um, I think they've kind of come off fairly well. but. I haven't long started their um, uh, highlight stage, so what I've done um, is edge highlight the armour with the silver, which is why they look very bright at the moment, and that's it actually, I've just done that stage. Um, so if I think if I've been um, saying what I thought I was saying is I was hoping to have these finished by the end of this vlog, which I won't, which is a bit of a shame, but um, at least I've got going on them essentially, and I've done their bases. So once the obviously once the highlight is finished on these, they're they're completely finished because their base is already done. Um, I'd like to say at this stage as well, these milk bottle tops have been an absolute lifesaver. Um, I did these when I was painting the bases just like this, so that I had something to hold on to. But as you can see, I've now left the models on them. Um, I've always traditionally held the model by the base. I know a lot of people use corks, but these have been absolutely fantastic. They're very light, um, because and because the models are fine cast, they um, stick on. To, they the blue tack holds them onto the base very well, and it just seems to work really, really well uh, um, holding it. So I think whenever I'm doing fine cast models or plastic models in the future, I think I might stick to this technique of um, using the milk bottle tops because they're very, very handy. So there we go, there are the six, and that's the kind of order I'm doing things in. I will um, paint these lovely bases first, 
then um, paint the base coats and the shading um, on these other bases uh, where it can get a bit messy then glue them onto here onto the bases and then do the highlights um, on the bases um, when uh, when I'm kind of good to go um, there was obviously a bit of a case where I'm cutting them um, I have to cut them off these bases um, and I, I've been using quite a light coating of super glue to attach them so hopefully they should come off pretty easily but um, when I did cut these guys off haven't been base coated and shaded it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of um, discoloration to the base coats because obviously I can um, finish it when um, I was highlighting however I did have a bit of trouble when I will, when I did what I will show you next Ta -da! and so here is my first completely finished warband so these are the um, 13 um, Gundabads and the Captain that you'd seen me finish painting in my last few vlogs and they have now been attached to their bases. So this is a completely finished effect of how my Gundabads on their bases will look. And I'm really, really chuffed with them. So these guys, it was absolutely terrifying. I had to, um, I painted them completely on other bases and then I basically had to cut them off those bases um, risking chipping the paint, risking breaking the feet, etc., um, to get them onto these ones, and it was a, a horrible experience. But thankfully, um, throughout the whole thing, only one foot broke. And when I get to him, I will show you that foot and show you how hopefully um, it's been repaired. I think they re look really cool. These guys have not been pinned um, because I'd already painted them before I came up with this idea. Um, they haven't been pinned, neither of the bases, so um, they're just glued on at the moment. So my basic hope is that they'll be all right because you know the, the models on top of the fine cast are quite light so hopefully they'll be alright but I'm basically thinking that whenever one of them comes off I'll kind of pin them individually um, rather than going do, through and doing the whole kind of set this guy's actually, you can probably see he's wobbling already which is a bit of a worry I think that foot's come off there so I'll need to um, re-glue that a bit now, I'm very 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 happy with how they look um, as a warband and I like the colour scheme and I like the bases so everything's kind of come together very well, I think. I know you've seen these guys before, but hopefully you're enjoying kind of seeing them on the base. Now, um, as I said, I had a bit of trouble with these because I had to cut them off the bases, which did damage the feet a bit, um, paint-wise. So once I glued them on, I then had I had to spend, um, you know, probably at least an hour, maybe two hours, kind of um, going over the bottoms of the feet, um, particularly kind of, you know, around here on these raised ones. I would have had to paint the feet black then kind of edge highlight the boots up again with um, silver and then shade them with Agrax Earth Shade. So it was kind of a three, co a three coat process to kind of get them completely finished and ready. Um, but I think it was worth doing and half my army now is complete. Let's just get these back here. So they're all in shot. Show you this guy. Now finally this is the one whose foot broke if you kind of look in there, I don't know if you can see it at all now, but basically the front part of this foot came off, so it's been glued back on, and then hopefully, because of the repainting, um, you won't be able to see it. So it's actually the stump, kind of his heel, that's glued to the base there, and then the front of that foot's just glued in front of it. Um, but there we go. So there is my first Gundabad warband, which I'm very excited about. Um, happy with the colour scheme, happy with the bases, and it's really cool to now... Um, after a few weeks of starting this project, finally have some completely finished models to kind of show off and feel like I'm making progress. So that's where I am at the moment with my doubles army. And we have my captain's warband completely ready to go. Bolg is undercoated, six Gundabads are undercoated, and six more Gundabads are on the way. Um, as I mentioned to you, I'd hoped to have um, finished these guys by this point because this is the end of this vlog. It's the last chance I'm going to get to record, and now is the bit that I've been dreading. Well, not dreading. It's going to be a cool week, but from now, I've it's currently uh, Thursday, and I'm now about to go off to um, the studio to play out the issue four SPG battle report and take all all the photos for that, and that's going to take up all Friday and all Saturday. Then on Sunday and Monday, I'm going to the Long Bottom Carnival. Tuesday, um, I've got a house full of nerds, and then from Wednesday to Monday, we're all off to Nova for the Nova Open. So um, it goes without saying that as much as it's going to be an incredibly exciting kind of hobby week for me, 
um, there's going to be very, very little time. Um, well, there's going to be no time for any hobbying. So I won't have a hobby vlog next next week. Um, which is a bit of a shame because I'm enjoying doing the hobby at the moment. But um, the bigger problem, to be brutally honest, is that um, I'm now about to lose. As it's Thursday, Monday, I'm about to lose. What is that? Ten days of hobbying time before the tournament, and I'll come back on Tuesday the sixth. Will be the first time I get to paint it. At which point I will have a week until Tuesday and then the Wednesday and the Thursday, I suppose, before I leave on the Friday. So I'll have nine days when I get back. Oh my God, that's terrifying. That's so much less than I thought it would be. <laughs> so I've got nine days when I come back to finish these Gundabads and paint Bulg. Um, that's a hell of an ask at the rate I paint. But um, I'm determined to get it done. I'm very, very hopeful. Um, I might be able to take one day off work that week, possibly, and um, kind of blitz it out then. But um, we'll have to see. Um, it's going to take a lot of evening painting, I think. So there we go. That's my um, that's my project. Um, I hope you're enjoying these these vlogs, and that's giving you a good update. Um, some good progress this week. I'm very happy. And hopefully, when I come back in two weeks' time with a vlog, I will have um, some more significant progress. Until then, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Um, support your hobby host by clicking on the links below. Check out my partner Adam's vlogs in the link below. Um, follow us on Facebook and like us on Twitter. No, it's the other way around. Um, support your hobby and happy strategy battle game.